Dr. John Bergsma is Associate Professor of Theology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. Dr. Bergsma served as a Protestant pastor for four years before entering the Catholic Church in 2001. He went on to get his Ph.D. in theology from the University of Notre Dame with a specialization in the Old Testament and the Dead Sea Scrolls. Dr. Bergsma has written many scholarly articles, some co-authored with Dr. Scott Hahn, and has appeared as a guest on EWTN's The Journey Home and Life on the Rock. He and his wife Dawn reside with their seven children in Steubenville, Ohio. Dr. Bergsma has over 18 powerful and inspiring multi-CD presentations. The following presentation is based on his three-CD set, The Dead Sea Scrolls for Catholics. To order this complete CD set, his other multi-CD sets, or to invite him to speak at your parish, please visit his website at johnbergsma.com. That's J-O-H-N-B-E-R-G-S-M-A dot com. In this enlightening talk, Dr. Bergsma will demonstrate why the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls is one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. He shows how the Catholic Church's canon of Scripture, that is, which books belong in the Bible, is now viewed in a new light by many Protestant scholars. Dr. Bergsma also demonstrates how the Catholic practice of priestly celibacy and communal life is rooted in Jewish Old Covenant practices and how the Dead Sea Scrolls have vindicated the Catholic Church's understanding of St. Paul's works of the law as they relate to how one is saved. Hello, this is Dr. John Bergsma. What you are about to hear is a shortened version of my three-hour presentation on the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's a lot to be said on this topic, and I would encourage you to visit Lighthouse Catholic Media's website to download my free outline that goes along with this presentation. It includes color maps, translations from the Dead Sea Scrolls that I read during the original talk, and much more. This outline will help you gain an even greater understanding of Holy Scripture and the early Church. And now, let's talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls and our Catholic faith. Well, it's a very great pleasure to be with you today and uh, to be able to talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, with you. It's my hope that as we look at them today, our faith will be deepened, that our own devotion to the Holy Spirit will be strengthened by looking at this ancient community, which very much hungered after the Holy Spirit and had dedicated themselves to prayer, to communal life, and to the study of the Scriptures. In the early spring of 1947, three Bedouin shepherds were pasturing their flock along the shores of the Dead Sea. And to amuse himself, one of the shepherds, by the name of Muhammad el Dib, started throwing stones into the cave mouths that lined the hills. There are these large bluffs, as we'll see in a moment, large limestone bluffs along the shores of the Dead Sea. And he threw a rock into one of the caves and he heard something shatter inside the cave. And that was unusual because it wasn't expected that there would be anything in there to shatter. Well, he didn't investigate right away, but the following day, they were in a different location. He had some time. He went back to that cliff face and crawled into the cave to investigate. And inside the cave, he found around a dozen clay jars. Most of the jars were empty. One was full of dirt. The last jar contained three ancient scrolls. These he pulled out, not recognizing what they were. Within a few months, it became evident that one of the scrolls was a nearly complete manuscript of the book of Isaiah from around 200 BC. Now the shock that that sent through the world of Bible scholarship was incredible because prior to the discovery of that manuscript of Isaiah from this cave, the oldest Hebrew copies that we had had of any significant part of the, of the Hebrew Bible was from around the late 900s AD. So suddenly we have a manuscript, nearly complete in almost perfect preservation of the entire book of Isaiah that's 1,200 years earlier than anything we had seen before. The other two scrolls that uh, Muhammad al dib found were also very interesting in their own right. One was a religious rule for a community life 
Like the rule of St. Benedict, this was their rule for their communal life. And as we're going to see, they were very much what we would think of as a monastic order. And the third scroll that he discovered was a, as it were, a commentary on Genesis, which we'll talk about in a moment. Okay, so that was 1947. That was the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is our topic for the day, the Dead Sea Scrolls, shedding new light on the scriptures and the church. And I'd like to begin with just an overview of Qumran. Qumran is along the northwest shore of the Dead Sea where the scrolls were found. The Dead Sea being the lowest place below sea level on earth. Why were they out in this wasteland with bad water and little to eat and just a few palm trees around and all that difficulty? Well, they were out there because Isaiah 40 says, prepare ye the way of the Lord in the wilderness. And what do you mean by the wilderness? Well, if you're living in Jerusalem, the wilderness is to the east of you. The wilderness is that barren, unpleasant place downhill from you out towards the Dead Sea. So prepare in the wilderness the way of the Lord. They took that quite literally, and they went straight east. There's also prophetic texts that talk about the Lord coming from the east to Zion. They figured that they were on the pathway of the Messiah when he would come to Jerusalem. So that's the nature of the community that we've got out there. These are, you know, they're great guys. You know, you, they're really serious about this stuff, okay? They're taking everything seriously and just, you know, devoting themselves to the study of Scripture to find how this all is going to happen. Okay, let's move on to talking about the textual finds now that we discovered at Qumran. Copies of 800 manuscripts were found. The vast majority were in very bad shape. Of those 800 manuscripts, 200 of them were of biblical books that we would recognize. Okay, so about, about a quarter of the manuscripts were biblical manuscripts. Just recopy the scriptures, almost always in Hebrew, the original language. Okay, the other 600, what were these other 600 manuscripts? Well, a lot of the other 600 were what we might call parabiblical texts. P-A-R-A, -A, biblical, parabiblical. That means alongside the Bible, things that are sort of Bible. Okay? And then we have liturgical texts. You know, things, things inspired by the Psalms, as it were, new Psalms that they wrote, and also other instructions for worship. So liturgical texts, they had calendrical texts. The calendar was extremely important for them. They had their rules, like the rule of St. Benedict. They had their communal rules. They had other legal texts about how to interpret the biblical laws. They had commentaries on many biblical books, line-by-line -line commentary. So a very rich library that gives us a wonderful picture into what one group of Jews was, was thinking about and, and believing in the time of Jesus. I should make a comment. When was Qumran inhabited? That's, that's something we didn't have a chance to remark on. Roughly from the middle of the second century BC, so maybe roughly around 150 BC, to about 68 AD, Qumran was inhabited. So for about 200 years, a community lived there. And they were finally wiped out by the Romans when the Romans came down to destroy Jerusalem in AD 70. So 200 years of existence at this site. Why are the Dead Sea Scrolls important? Okay, they are important for the text of Scripture because they are our oldest copies of the Old Testament in Hebrew, sometimes over a thousand years older than what would otherwise be our oldest copies of Scripture. So that's very important. Not that it overturned the Old Testament, but in certain points of the Old Testament where it was always hard to translate or hard to see what, is that, what exactly was going on in the Hebrew, the scrolls have given us better copies where we've been able to make some improvements for the canon of Scripture, we'll talk about this later, the Dead Sea Scrolls influence debates between Protestants and Catholics about what is the correct canon of Scripture. They're important for the interpretation of Scripture because there are certain phrases that only occur in the New Testament and the Dead Sea Scrolls. Certain